everyone, welcome back to Onyx Pages. I'm going to be doing a seven calorie shell review of The Deep by River Solomon. I was so excited to purchase uh, a copy of this book. I pre-ordered it because I absolutely loved River Solomon's uh, Unkindness of Ghosts and I couldn't wait to see what they came up with next. So The Deep is a story that follows uh, Yetu, who is a Wanjiru. Sorry, yeah, Wanjiru. Wajinru. I'm going to actually read um, the description of the story on the inside of the, the dust cover. So, Yetu holds the memories for her people. Her people, the Wanjinru, water-dwelling descendants of pregnant African slave women thrown overboard by slavers, live idyllic lives in the deep. Their past, too traumatic to be remembered regularly, is forgotten by everyone save one, save the historian. Yetu remembers for all the Wajinru, and the memories, painful and wonderful, traumatic and terrible and miraculous, are destroying her. And so she flees to the surface, escaping the memories and the expectations and the responsibilities, and discovers a world the Wajinru left behind long ago. Yetu will learn more than she ever expected to about her own past and about the future of her people. If they are all to survive, they'll need to reclaim the memories, reclaim their identities, and own who they really are. Inspired by the hit song by Clipping, comprised of Dave, David Diggs, William Hudson, and Jonathan Snipes, the deep will resonate long after the last page is turned. And I agree, it is still reverberating inside me. So if you follow this channel for long enough, you'll know that I absolutely love uh, African mermaid, black mermaid stories. Um, and I love the under the underwater feel of it all. So I'm just going to go into the seven cowrie shell review. In terms of world building, I gave this story one whole cowrie shell because the world building is incredible. Rivers takes us into this uh, underwater world in which there are these these sea people who have created a very sophisticated system of survival. And as I read, this idea of understanding and appreciating that the past is so can sometimes be so traumatic it it's painful to remember um this society has figured out a way to hold the past right to keep it close but not to be harmed by it and whether or not this idea of having one person be the holder of the past while everybody else can live their lives not really remembering that might be a strategy that might work, but it might not. And so that idea, that, that societal strategy is really questioned in the story. And for me, uh, as somebody who lives in Canada and somebody whose parents are from Trinidad and had to go through like the DNA testing thing to figure out where we were, uh, where we were from on the continent, this idea of how important the past is for African people um, is really personal to me. So I really enjoyed following Yetu and her struggles as being the person who has to hold all of these painful memories while at the same time trying to figure out, um, you know, whether there are other options available. So I gave a full cowrie shell to world building. The development of the world under the sea was really beautiful, especially the interactions with sea creatures. Um, also, there is there is um, a mythology about the Middle Passage that gets explored as well. There's a question about communities that may have been completely decimated or not and and all of that was really beautifully and seamlessly done two uh Kyrie shell number two is about characters um so the main character is yetu and at least for me um there were some other characters like her, her mother is an and an elder uh are people who she interacts with under the sea but then as she finds her way up above the water she also interacts with land dwellers or two-leggeds and those secondary characters are really interesting as well and i found myself like when she starts when she started to connect with those people above ground above sorry above the water it gave me vibes like life of pi vibes and also le petit prince vibes like there's something about um 
her kind of interacting with a group of people that are related to her genetically but also very very different so but also the the loneliness of that her interactions with these characters are really sparse but you get to learn more about them in particular there's this one character called Uri who uh, Yetu has a lot of conversations with and learns a lot about and it kind of reminds me of the conversations uh, um, that the main character in Life of Pi had um, with the people that uh, he met while he was um, floating in the water. So a full carry shell for, for characters. Um, in terms of points of view, the story is mostly told from the point of view of Yetu, but there are parts in the story where the point of view shifts and we it's as though the narrator, narrator is taking us through a history, as though we're actually a part of the ceremony where all of the Wanjiru actually um, have an opportunity to remember collectively. Um, Yetu is the character that I wanted to hear the most from because she was sort of trying to figure up, she, sorry, she's trying to figure out whether she should continue to hold this, this burden of being this historian or whether she should do something else and what it means for her to, in, to enjoy or to experience life, you know, above the sea. And, and for those of you who are interested in the whole The Little Mermaid story, I mean, there are elements of that. This is definitely, this story is not The Little Mermaid <laughs> at all, but um, there are elements of The Little Mermaid in the story that actually help you distinguish this story from The Little Mermaid. Um, but there are questions about life above the water and, and what happened and how, how exactly Africans who were thrown overboard, how exactly they became uh, the Wanjiru, these mermaid creatures. Um, so points of view, I would give a full cowrie shell because um, it, the story is told by the most marginalized character, which is Yetu, who has this burden to hold this memory. And one of the things that might not be clear in the description is that um, the Wanjiru have, they have this annual celebration called the Remembrance. And it's, it's almost like a religious spiritual celebration where all the Wanjiru come together and the historian, which, which is Yetu, um, remembers and transmits all of these memories and for everybody else it's this wonderful ecstatic interesting experience but for her it's physically painful because she has to hold these memories inside of her body it's physically and spiritually and emotionally painful so she and and this is her duty right um and so that i believe that she is the most marginalized in this story and so as you'll remember when walida imarisha was talking about visionary fiction one of the questions that i learned from her to ask was is the story told from the point of view of the most marginalized and i think that it was so a full carry shell for that um in terms of relevance describe the conflicts the themes and the problems in the story are they thoroughly examined are they relevant to me and do they invite an important change and I, I would say yes, a full cowrie shell for relevance because as I mentioned, as somebody from the diaspora, a lot of the themes, remembering the past, um, being harmed by the past, being liberated um, by the past, being empowered and inspired from the past, uh, by the past, those are all really important themes uh, for, for me. Um, in terms of the fifth uh, uh, cowrie shell, the question is, the theme is about options. Describe the possible solutions offered in the story. Do the options challenge power inequities? Do they lead to a more just world? Is there something valuable that is learned from the choice? So um, I think that the, obviously if you are someone who, and this, I guess I'm actually thinking about a lot of stories where you've got the one, right? You've got this this person who has a quest. Maybe that quest is bestowed upon them by a magical creature or by their ancestors. But there's always this question of, you know, will you fulfill your destiny or will you throw destiny to the wind and chart your own path? Um, 
you know, will you be oppressed by your destiny or will you rise up against it, right? Um, there's always a choice of going with what people tell you you need to do or trying to do something different or mm, that it might be only the two options, right? Do what you're told or do something different. So that that question comes up in a lot of literature, uh, a lot of black sci-fi, African uh, futurist literature. And I like the choice that Yetu makes, right? I like that she has to trust, she has to trust herself uh, in making this choice. And I think that the solutions that are offered to her are interesting ones and the ultimate choice she makes is also powerful. Uh, so one full cowrie shell for options. For otherworldly elements, um, I would actually give half a cowrie shell for that. Um, I think there, I, I, I was left wanting more magic and more spirituality. There was, there was definitely a mundane kind of magic about this story, but I, I really wanted a little bit more pizzazz in, in that respect. But I will say that, I mean, it's not a spoiler to say that the Wanjiru are African people who were thrown overboard, so or who jumped overboard. So the actual transformation of their bodies from being air breathers to water breathers, just that was an otherworldly element that was really beautiful and, and I enjoyed reading it. It was really well done. I would give a half a cowrie shell for otherworldly elements because I did want a little bit more. And then the final cowrie shell is for overall reading experience. Was the book enjoyable, edifying, energizing, engaging, entertaining? All words that start with E. Um, absolutely yes, one whole cowrie shell for this. The Deep was wonderful. It was wonderful. I read it in one sitting. Um, it felt lyrical and beautiful and interesting to me. Um, and what you might know if you follow, follow this channel for long enough is that my favorite author is Nalo Hopkinson. And my favorite book written by Nalo Hopkinson is The New Moon's Arms, which is also a story about Africans living underwater. And I'm really attracted to that mythology because I'm a water, I'm a water lover, a water dweller. Um, water is my favorite element. I love spending time underwater. I'm a free diver. Um, so anything that involves the world under the water is really beautiful to me. And so I really enjoy this, this, uh, this story. What I also love about this is finally the way that River Solomon um, writes this story as a reverberation, as a continuation of um, a, a song called The Deep, right? So if you notice, if you look at the cover, it says River Solomon with, and then it has three people. These three people are the member, are members of the group uh, Clipping, and that group created a song called The Deep, um, which takes up this this legend of these people, these African people who created a society underwater because they would not, they refused to, they refused to cross the middle passage and end up in slavery. And at the end of the story, there is an afterword in which the history of the deep is explained. Um, and I would commend the afterword, which was written by Clipping. I would commend that to you as well, because once I read the book, it was it was amazing to see how this story kind of riffed off of that that previous story and how that previous story riffed off of one before. And so this idea of a tradition of taking an idea and and working with it and focusing on a particular area of that idea or, or mythology, and then you know animating it and sharing it with us is really beautiful as well. And a lot of authors will be inspired by books, but they will never 
they'll just say that they were inspired by the books. They won't actually say that they've written it with these other people. So I really like that idea of collective storytelling. Anyway, that is my um, review of The Deep by River Solomon. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, it is only, I think it's 207 pages. It's a pretty short read. No, I lied. 163. Uh, it is a really short read, really well written and really beautiful. Um, I have heard some feedback that folks found that some of it's it was a little choppy because some chapters would be actually written from the perspective of the people in the history versus from Yetu's perspective. I actually didn't mind that, but I would I would recommend this if you haven't read a lot of um, science fiction about the Middle Passage or about like if if you're looking for another kind of story about Africans who were enslaved because because uh, there are, is a lot of writing about Africans who are enslaved like Kindred for example and um, I'm just looking at my bookshelf um, Redwood and Wildfire um, and you know not ever fair but there are there's there's a bunch of 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 writing that is focused on like antebellum times this is focusing on a different part of the of the African experience and if you're interested in different different stories in that vein then you should try this as well as mother of the sea so I would say in terms of mermaid stories um, the deep by River Solomon the new moon's arms by Nalo Hopkinson mother of the sea by Zeta Elliott um, is there anything else at this point I think those are I think that's the that's the trifecta that I would share with you. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you had read have read the deep, then let me know what you think in the comment section below. And please like, you know, subscribe, all the things that us booktubers tell you at the end of videos. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.